I remember back in high school watching the movie 1776 based on the musical that chronicled the events that led to the adoption of the Declaration of Independence by the Second Continental Congress in Philadelphia. In the movie, the delegates often talked about the heat. Not surprising given the time and place, but is that just the stuff of legend? Well, we can reconstruct the weather leading up to that first Independence Day, and though there was no organized weather observing network in 1776, we do have observations from a few individuals. The most complete come from a Mr. Phineas Pemberton, a member of a prominent local family. He observed temperature, wind, and weather each day around 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. Now, given that many of the delegates were in Philadelphia a month early, let's start in June. And based on Pemberton's observations, the averages for June 1776 were 66 at 7 a.m. and 74 at 3 p.m. The lowest 7 a.m. temperature that month was 54. The highest at 3 p.m. was 82. The modern day averages at 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. in June are 68 and 81 respectively. So at least the afternoons in June 1776 Philadelphia were significantly cooler than today. Now this past June in Philadelphia was relatively cool by modern standards at both 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. Averages were 64 and 78 and even cooler than June 1776 in the morning. But the afternoons this year were warmer on average much warmer if you compare the highest temperature then with the 95 this June. Bottom line, June 1776 doesn't seem all that hot to me, at least not by modern standards, but of course clothing styles have changed and we have air conditioning now. Starting on July 1st, 1776, we also have Philadelphia temperature observations from Thomas Jefferson, usually three or four per day. Now, if we combine Pemberton's and Jefferson's data, we can get a pretty good idea of the weather in early July of 1776. July 1st started foggy, but the sun came out and southerly breezes sent temperatures into the 80s. Pemberton reported a thunder shower at 5 p.m. To me, this looks like a typical humid summer day in southeastern Pennsylvania. Temperatures stayed in the 70s on July 2nd, as Pemberton observed much rain this forenoon. Winds shifted from southwest to northwest in the afternoon with clearing skies at 4 p.m., a classic description of a day with a cold frontal passage. Winds stayed northwesterly on July 3rd, a partly sunny and breezy day with high temperatures in the mid-70s. That sounds like a refreshing summer day behind a cold front. The temperature fell to 64 by 7 a.m. on the morning of July 4th, but by that historic afternoon, winds had shifted to the southwest, and Jefferson recorded an appropriate 76 degrees at 1 p.m. as skies clouded up, the kind of sequence associated with warm air trying to return. At least based on the available data, that first Independence Day seemed pretty uneventful to me weather-wise. Have a great Independence Day. Stay tuned. Our extended forecast is next.